Okay, everybody, here we are at Artist Spotlight. I have today uh, Jeff Snow, who's an animation story artist. Um, and he's here to tell us about all his role in animation and his career and what he's how he's got to where he is today. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm fine, thank you. Sounds good. So let's start out, Jeff, where, where are you from, man? Where, where, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Colorado. Uh, I grew up there. Yeah, and I've been, out, I've been out here in Los Angeles for close to 30 years now. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. And what got you into kind of pursuing animation? Yeah, you know, uh, since a kid, I, since I was a little kid, I always liked uh, cartoons and comic books, and and uh, I used to draw all the time, uh, all, all my life, and and uh, I always wanted to get into animation, and and um, I actually didn't know that I could get into animation, but it was something I kind of always had a drive to at least go in that general direction. So, did you have any kind of mentors or guidance that kind of helped you along? Anybody to kind of say, oh, go go to this school, do that, or whatever, or no? Uh, no, I, you know, originally um, I wanted to study art in school. I ended up, uh, I studied music in school instead. And um, when I, uh, I got a degree in music and I, I used to work in the Disneyland bands. And while I was there, I met somebody in animation. And I'd drawn my, my whole life. So uh, um, when I actually met this person, I found out about, you know, possibilities of getting into the industry or how to go about doing it. And I kind of followed that path and ended up getting a job in animation. Nice, nice. So no kind ah. of prior experience or anything, like really just kind of just had, your, of course, your own kind of self-driven art that you did on your own. But that was basically it, huh? Yeah, that was it. I mean, I, my, my mom was an artist. I have drawn my whole life. And uh, and I'm so, so I, I incessantly drew all as I was growing up. You know, I, I never really stopped. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now, was your first job in, in L.A. and in the California area or the, the first job you got? Yeah, the first job I got was uh, was at Warner Brothers. I, I worked on the uh, the Batman animated series. Holy, uh, wait, I, wait, wait, wait! Your first job, you scored the animated first, Batman. Yeah, yeah. Hey, dude, let, let me get that rabbit's tail in your and put in your pocket, man. That's right. Holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> so let's 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 go with that. So your first job, you go to Warner Brothers. So I gotta hear this. So play that out for me. Okay. Well, basically, what happened is um, um, I I told you I you know I met someone in animation when I was in the Disney band. Um, and then uh, I ended up taking a job on cruise ship as, as a musician after I took this little class in North Hollywood, which was kind of, it was called the introduction to the industry. So told me a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when I went, so I wanted to put a portfolio together. So I, I was always been a super into, um, into a comic book. So I went out on a cruise ship and I worked for a few months and I put together a portfolio. And when I went, came back, uh, I had about four grand and, uh, and I, I moved, you know, here to permanently to LA and I drove up North to, uh, a comic book convention up in San Francisco. I met Stan Lee, and who later I actually worked for years later. But um, and he was like, "Well, I'm not a comic book guy, you know." But um, I ended up coming back then to uh, L.A. and I first went to um, went to Disney first. They were hiring. Went to Warner Brothers. They were hiring for this show called Taz Tasmania Devil Show, and they had they had me do a uh, you know a, a test for it. And I knew nothing about animation, you know. So I, I did my best, but I walk in there. The first day, and there's all this stuff from, uh, they were just starting the Batman animated series. And I was like, oh, it was like exactly like, you know, in, in my, kind of hit me in my veins, you know what I mean? I was like, I really love to work on this. And they're like, oh, no one's hiring for this. So anyway, I did my test. And uh, and um, I went, you know, I, I, I about a week later, I called and I went back and I picked it up again. And they're like, they passed on me because I didn't know anything about animation. And I... But I was like, I'll pick up my, my test anyway. And I go in there and I pick up uh, pick up a test. I see all the Batman stuff. And I'm like, man, I sure would like to work on this. And they're like, yeah, they're not hiring. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I, yeah, I've been up there, you know, a couple times just with the thing. And the, and the guy at the reception is like, you know, there's there's a couple directors back there. It was lunchtime. I was like, hey, why don't you go back there? And I, I was like, okay. So I go back there and I met uh, a couple people. And they and I had a couple Batman pages from comic books because that's what I wanted to get into. And they're like, so it's, yeah, we'll get, we'll give you a try. We need something that you know the time is lay, layout. So they gave me an, an apprentice uh, opportunity here. There's the way in. I know, and I was just like, I was ecstatic. It was like the best. Right. You know, I love that show too. So it was so fun. Do you think you need a formal education or degree in order to succeed in this type of uh, um in an area of animation or? What do you think? I don't think you need it. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, belittle anyone who wants to go to college. Oh so yeah, I'm yeah. Taught at Cal Arts and I've, and I, you know, I have an Academy of Art up in San Francisco, um, and it's great for making connections with people, but it is not necessary because animation is a vocational school or is a vocational, uh, you know, field. So if you actually, you know, kind of learn your craft, especially with online kind of opportunities, yeah, and people kind of 
it's really not a necessary thing. I mean, your, your best skill for getting and keeping a job is, is working on yourself and your own abilities and being able to present that to people. So, no, I don't think it's a necessary thing. In fact, most of the people, um, many, many people I know did not get a degree in animation. And some of the most talented people I know never studied in you know, traditional art school. Explain what your role and actually what that is so everybody will know. You're a story artist. So. Okay. Well, as a story artist, basically, um, I do what's called storyboards. Uh, which is one, one of the phases of, of the process. Uh, I'm, you know, currently I've been working in features primarily for the last 20 some years. And as a story artist, so the, the role is, I mean, it, it's kind of story and storyboard. So what you have to, you're also kind of contributing to the overall concept of the story. You're in a room with a bunch of the story peoples and, and, and the, the writer, and you're all talking concepts. You are involved in the actual structure and the building of the story. And a lot of times, you know, a script may not even be written. You know, you'll be just given a, a sequence and like, well, we want this to do, you know, they'll have a particular idea. And you have to like write it as well at times, not always, because you know, a lot of times it's, you know, the script writers has written pages, but a lot of times you have nothing to go and you have to be able to write it as well. So uh, basically you have to, you know, create a sequence via a, a series of drawings and, you know, being a visual medium that it is. And sometimes you write temp dialogue and stuff. You put it up on a, uh, on, uh, on through editorial and you watch it. It's like a giant slideshow, but it is the blueprint of what the film is. So everything's actually conceived in this actual stage. Got it. Got it. Got it. And now uh, you, you're doing, you're doing more, uh, film or television at this point. Uh, I, I've worked in features, uh, as a, as a staffer. I, you know, I've also worked a lot in television, Ma mainly in the last 20 years though, as freelance. I, I, you know, cause, uh, Features is generally speaking a little more rewarding because the finished product is always so much more beautiful because there's so much more money and technology that goes into mm -hmm, it. You know? mm -hmm. Exactly, the output is tends to be more realistic and you know yeah. the coloring they put into it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I'm pivoting on to that role that you're doing. So I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm envisioning you, the director, the producer, some of the writers in a room, and you guys are kind of hashing out what this thing is going to look like. Um, so what what software or tools or apps are you using on a daily basis? Um, in those type of circumstances on your typical day? Like, what is your go-to stuff that you're using on a daily basis? Well, of course, I, I work on a, you know, a Cintiq, and, and I use a Photoshop. I just use Photoshop programs. And uh, I know, like, this much of Photoshop. It's <laughs> a, a, a tiny amount, you know, how to, <laughs> because, because it's such a huge program. But I know how to, you know, actually... Uh, you, what you, need, you, need, you, need, you know how to get what you need to get done out of it, basically. Yeah, exactly. And it's like I said, it's that much <laughs> of the huge program. Also, uh, I've been uh, drawing on Procreate a lot uh, as, as an app. I'm sorry? Pro Procreate. Procreate. Procreate, okay. Yeah, you know, for, for my uh, like uh, my iPad. And then Disney also has a proprietary kind of uh, software that they're using that assists with this stuff, too. Okay. Okay. So there's just a few tools, and um, and you can and you, you mentioned the iPad, so you're not that's for as far as hardware. You're just using like a portable, like it's, I guess it's easier to you guys for some kind of, some type of a tablet or something to use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, at work I use a, a Cintiq, and here at the office, I'm you know my Cintiq is right below me, so I, you know I work here on that, and then I've got the iPad as well. I I rarely actually even draw traditionally anymore, mainly because you can do everything uh, you know digitally. Problems. Yeah. I would say the biggest challenge I've had. Um, and uh, the thing, I mean, if I had any advice for any people to be aware of, it's, it's just the interactions on, on an interpersonal relationship that you have with people. Because you're, you're in a room and you're constantly bombarded with criticism, you know, and, and stuff, which may or may not be valid. But you have to kind of proof yourself up about that so that, so that it doesn't really affect you, you know. And uh, I, I think that's the biggest challenge um, in general is just to go, how can you actually contribute to something and then have, you know, these... Uh, you know, shifts, you know, that will, will happen in the, in the, ver in the variety and the, and the way the things develop and then, you know, keep your own uh, sense of, uh, um, you know, not, not feeling invalid, validated and be able to continue, continue on, you know, right. I know for myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big techie guy, you know, cause I'm all pre-production stuff. I, my, my main focus is design and story. So the thing that speaks to me is how well is the story told? How much can you draw someone in, you know, and, and have them feel the emotions they, they need and actually uh, experience whatever the message you're trying to get across. Consequently, I don't have a lot of, um, of opinion because I think the technology is so amazing right now. You can do practically anything you want. The things that I love of, um, is, is when it actually explores more um, artist-centric kind of pro processes. So you, you see, you know, something moving 
that's actually moving artwork. That's that's great. But as far as you know, as far as uh, VR or or any different types, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, the big craze a couple of years ago really started with 3D. But personally, all I care about is am I sucked into the story itself, you know? and uh, just because that's kind of along the lines of wh where I focus on. So. Um, yeah, person or animator or show or piece of work that kind of just kind of wow, just you know, I want to keep keep on my game kind of thing. Well, you know, I've um, I've been fortunate to meet some luminaries in the industry, you know, over the years, like uh, Hayao Miyazaki, Frank Frazetta, um, you know, several others that have always inspired me. Anyway, so that you know, that's some individual people to look up for. My coming from um, animation or coming from a kind of comic book. Uh, uh, love of comic books as my own background, I always tend to go back to, you know, who's actually inspiring me in comic books, because that kind of represents the drawing aspect, which is initially what got me into it. So I love like guys like John Buscema, Alex Toth, Frank Zeta, you know, that that's, those are kind of, you know, where I, my inspiration draws from. And I find I continuously will go back or I go to the comic stores all the time for inspiration. And then the films themselves, they, they really runs the gamut of, you know, what touches me. And if it touches me, I'm like all in. I recently just saw um, uh, Jojo Rabbit, which I thought was fantastic, you know, just came out this year. But I mean, if something touches you filmically, that also is, I find inspiration from. What have you done in the past that you're kind of like, you know, man, I nailed that. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's funny because I, I always say, you know, I always hope I'm my, I'm my own worst critic because I can certainly am very effective at being that. <laughs> but but um, the, 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 the shows that I've, I've been really happy and proud to have been a part of, actually the, the Batman animated series, which was my first job, I, I think it was great to have you know, worked on that. Um, I worked on several uh, films at, at Disney, which I thought were great. You know, uh, Tarzan was, was great. Uh, I, I did the head of story on El Dorado at, at DreamWorks and uh, Road to El Dorado and um, Over the Hedge. Which I was, you know, I was happy to be a part of those movies. But there's been so many of them that I, I really the lost am, track, huh? been a part of, you know. So it's, uh, and I, I feel very fortunate, especially when you see something, you know. I mean, you see, see something like Zootopia or Moana, which I work on both of those. When you actually see, you know, you're in the day to day grind of the thing, and you don't always, you don't always, you know, experience that. When you see it when it's done, and you get the reaction, the audience are like, you know, that's kind of what you're doing it for. You're there to hopefully you know, get someone out of their, out of their head and enjoy, you know, what, whatever it is you're doing. And when you see the beauty that's actually created in the final product, it's, it's pretty, pretty incredible. Awesome. 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 Well, I'm going to, we're wrapping up a little bit. Um, um, so let me leave some, some little uh, nuggets for, you know, our listeners and the people who are uh, tuning in our spotlight and want to hear from you. Um, what advice would you give someone um, wanting to start in this business, say a high school or someone in college? Uh, well, I would say always, you know, I mean, really be true to yourself as far as, you know, continuing to develop yourself. Stay humble if you can, you know, as far as like realize that, you know, art is an endless uh, landscape. You know, I mean, you're never going to master everything, you know, just keep learning and trying to keep that spirit that, you know, you're hope hopefully uh, going to continue feeding yourself, you know, because you have a, a way to go. And in terms of getting into the industry itself, I mean, really, uh, more than anything, it's, it's, you know, finding out who to contact, you know, making yourself known to them, find what they need and want, and then actually give it to them. You know, that's really the, the nuts and bolts of how you get into that and how you do that. That's an art in itself, I think. You know? <laughs> and like I'm sure, you know, has something to do with it. Like myself, I mean, I, I feel I kind of lucked into the job because I had no training, you know, and I, and I learned on the job. But, you know, I, I was fortunate, you know, to be given the opportunity. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Just be be prepared and have your you know, have your stuff together when opportunity arises, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. And gotcha. being persistent also. I've, I've also, I've seen some people that they want to get involved and then they go off and do something else. But, you know, if you keep, you know, keep your plan and, and you know. Don't deviate, right? Stay, stay your course do what and you focus. Need to do. Yeah, and, you know, you'll get there. You'll, opportunities will come if a person persists. Yeah, I want to thank you so much. You have a, a, a great story to tell. And um, like I said, um, uh, please be a friend to the show. I'm sure we'll be calling on you again, and some people are going to have some more questions. So we'll keep in touch. And um, thanks for being part of Art of Spotlight, brother. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Have a good one, man. Okay. Bye.